Hi guys, my name is Ross Fairgreave, uh, welcome to whenxphotography.com. Today we're going to be talking about this little guy, this is the GoPro HD Hero. Um, I love these little things, uh, the quality of them is ridiculous, they look like a toy when you get them out of the box, stick them on something, press go and you'll be blown away by the footage. Um, they're, it's basically a mountable camera, you can put it wherever you like, they make mounts for you know, head straps, on ski helmets, on cars, which we'll be doing in a minute, um, everything. And the footage you get from them is really, really good. Um, I get a lot of questions anyway, asking me what the best setting is. There's five settings built into this little thing, and they're kind of cryptically just called R1 to 5. You can find out what these are resolution wise and frames per second, that sort of thing, but that doesn't really tell the whole story. There are a few nuances to each setting, uh, and it's worth knowing when to use each one. There's no panacea, no perfect setting, but there is a time and a place for each one. So today we're going to do a little test and definitively find out what setting is best and when to use each one. So let's have a go. Okay, so this is the R1 mode. This is the lowest resolution mode that the GoPro does. Uh, it films at what's called WVGA, which is 848 pixels wide by 480 pixels high. Um, I'd never really use this setting, to be honest, unless you're desperately short of memory unless you're desperately short of memory card space. Um, it's, the, the footage from it isn't bad, but there are much better settings in there, um, so I pretty much ditch R1 altogether. Okay, this is filmed in the R2 setting. This is the first of the GoPro's HD settings. It's 720p, that's 1,280 pixels wide by 720 pixels tall, and it's filmed at 30 frames a second. Um, the footage from this setting looks pretty nice. Um, it's definitely usable, but for a few reasons we'll get onto on the other settings, I never do actually use R2. It looks nice enough, but I think it can always be beaten by either the R3 or the R4 setting, or even the R5 setting, depending on what you're doing. So we'll get onto that uh, when we look at the next one. So basically R1 and R2 pretty much never use. I ditch them. Right, now we're shooting in the R3 setting, and this is the first of the settings that I do actually use. I said that R2 was nice enough, but could be beaten by some settings. Uh, the first one of those that can beat it in certain situations is this R3 mode. This is the same resolution as R2, it's still 720p, um, but where R2 is um, recorded at 30 frames a second, R3 is recorded at 60 frames a second. What this means is that it gives you the ability to get really, really nice slow-mo footage out of it. You basically you film at 60 frames a second. If you then play it back at 30 frames a second, then uh, you get you know 50% speed, super super smooth. If you try to slow the R2 footage down to 50% speed, you're getting 15 frames a second, which is going to look horrible. So yeah, in this case, I pretty much use R3 instead of R2 if ever I want to do slow motion. The only downside R3 has over R2, under R2, is that um, in low light it'll struggle a little bit more, basically because there's more frames per second, it means the internal shutter speed has to be a little bit faster, which lets in less light, um, and so that can degrade the image quality a bit. Um, still though I don't use R2 in low light, uh, I'll use R4, and we'll get onto that now. Okay, this is the R4 setting, and this is, I think, the seventh time I've tried to film the R4 setting for you. Unfortunately, the start-stop button on my GoPro is pretty buggered and has a mind of its own. So I keep managing to get about 30 seconds into it, and then the clip ends. It'll probably happen this time as well, so you might be getting the eighth time in a minute. Anyway, R4, first thing you're going to notice about this is it's square screen, not your normal widescreen. A lot of people see that and pretty much write it off straight away because they're going to be outputting to widescreen in the end, so why do you want some weird square screen format? Actually, I think it's a mistake to write this off. It's pretty much just an R2 setting with some extra lines um, in height. It's, so if you remember the R2, we've got uh, 1280 by 720, and this one is 1280 by 960. So it is literally the same frame, only with more vertical height. So what this allows you to do is, if you've mis-aimed your GoPro by a little bit, because you've got that extra height, you can then crop a little bit off to kind of reframe it a little bit if you like. For example, if you've aimed it a little bit too low, you just cut a little bit off the bottom uh, to shape it back to the widescreen format that you want. If you've aimed it a little bit too high, you cut that information off the top, and then again you have a nicely aimed widescreen shot. Um, this is literally the same as R2, other than it's a little bit taller. 
So, whereas before I said that R2 was a bit better than R3 because it's at 30 frames a second, sorry, the low light, because it's at 30 frames a second, even if I'm shooting in low light or even if I know for certain I'm not going to use slow-mo, which is what R3 is good for, I'll still always take R4 over R2. I don't really see any benefits that R2's got over R4 other than you don't have to crop it later, but that takes seconds. So if you're willing to make that crop, uh, go with R4. Okay, the last setting, this is your R5 setting. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice about this is that it's not quite as wide as the other ones. This has got an angle of 127 degrees. Uh, all the other ones are 170. Um, 170 is really, really, really wide. It is really wide. Um, sometimes you're gonna need that extra width. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to fit a little bit more in your shot or you're gonna need it to, the wider the angle, the more stable, less shaky your footage will appear. Um, and also that extra width increases the sense of speed. So if you want to get you know, across that the person's going really fast, make the most of that sense of speed, then um, you probably will want that extra width. If you don't, however, this is by far the best quality setting. It's full HD, 1080p, which is 19, 20 pixels wide by 1080 height. Uh, so basically, if you can use this setting, if you don't need the width, do. Uh, if you do need the width, then choose one of the other settings, and I'd always go with R3 if you need slow motion, um, or R4 if you know you're definitely not going to need slow motion, or if you're shooting in slightly worse light. So that's it. Okay, thanks very much for watching my review of the settings in the GoPro HD Hero. I hope it helped you out. Uh, if you've got any questions, head over to whenextphotography.com um, and hit the contact me link and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. I'm going to keep making some more of these videos. I've just picked up a GoPro HD 2, uh, so I'll be checking out the settings in that, checking out how it compares to this GoPro HD 1 as well. So check in the photo school section of whenextphotography.com soon. Uh, I'm Ross Fairgrieve and I hope to see you back here soon.